Hello, today I'll be talking about 878 Vikings. Um, played this game uh, one time uh, back in 2018 where I actually played against a friend of mine and then I also just played it this week uh, solo to refresh myself on the rules. I think it came out in 2017 and I believe there's a second edition um, which I don't have and don't know the rules differences so I'll be going over the setup and how to play uh, rules in this edition which is the first edition um, so if you have the second edition I can't guarantee I'm sure it's pretty close but I can't guarantee these rules are exactly the same anyway let's get on with setup all right as usual with most uh, board games first thing you'll do is place the board in the uh, center of the table where all the players can get to it all right, next each uh, player will choose factions. There's four factions of the game. Um, if you're playing with four players, each player will control one faction, um, divided into two sides. You have the English and the Viking side. Um, if you're playing with two players, which is how I've played this and how I'm going to play this in this uh, demonstration, um, one side will control both the English sides, which include the house carl and the thane and the other player will control the the viking player will control the norsemen and the berserkers so each faction will take the components of their um, side so the house house carls will take their deck of cards their units and their two battle dice the player will take cards numbers 1 through 12. There is an advanced setup rule. There are extra cards uh, 13 through 19. And if you want to customize your deck, um, you can choose any of the cards 8 through 19. You can choose any 5 of them. So you'll still only ever have 12 cards, but if you want to replace um, some of the uh, 8 through 12 that are in the normal deck you can replace some of them with um, these other decks 13 through 19 that's in the advanced rules we're going to stick with cards numbered 1 through 12 in each deck and just stick with the basic so again for the house carl you have cards numbered 1 through 12 you've got 20 uh, house carl units and two battle dice all right, the other uh, faction on the English side is the English Thane, and they'll have cards 1 through 12. They've got three battle dice, and they've got uh, 40 units. All right, on the faction side, or on the Viking faction, or Viking side, the Norseman faction has cards 1 through 12. He's got 40 Norseman units, um, black, kind of hard to see, and he's got three black battle dice. And finally, the Berserker faction has 20 Berserker units, cards 1 through 12, and two red battle dice. Each faction will shuffle their faction deck and draw three cards into their hand. Of course, you keep these secret from other players now players on the same side can uh, tell each other what cards they have um, but you keep them secret from the other side when you draw your starting hand of three cards if you don't get at least one movement card um, which has these numbers over here and we'll talk about those more in a minute but if you only got event cards like this that have no movement numbers on them um, you would show your hand to the other players shuffle them back into your deck and draw three more cards until you get at least one movement card and each faction will do that next you do the english unit setup so you look at uh, these um, areas on the map that are white outlined are called shires you look at all the shires that have units in a circle and you put the corresponding units so you'd put one house carl unit and one thane unit in this shire same down here, one house carl and one thane unit. And the same here. So I'll go ahead and set that up. But everywhere there's a figure with a circle underneath him, that's where you set up 
here you would just set up one thing unit here you just set up one thing unit after setup those icons um, have no more meaning in the game so let me get the map populated with the English units all right as you can see I've got all the starting English units on the map next each English faction so the house Carl and the Thane each get to put four additional units on any shires they want in the map so they could they don't have to stick with the ones with just the uh, starting icon or the city icons they can put them anywhere they want on the map so uh, let me get that done all right I've added the four um, house Carl and four Thane units mostly concentrating over here but I've added those to the map the remaining units for the English factions are just become their stockpile for reinforcements later. Next you set the 10 yellow uh, third, the third deck, 10 yellow third units, and the two uh, third combat dice. Just set them near the English players as uh, they'll be using them later in the game. Next you take the round pawn and put it on round one or space one of the round track. Next you'll place the black turn cube. These are the cubes that have no um, just blank sides. You'll play, place the black one, the Norseman, on the first turn as they'll be taking the first turn of the game. The remaining turn cubes for the other factions you'll just place in this black bag and mix them up and, and they'll be used uh, later. Next you take the Viking leader cards. There's one A, three B's, and three C's. You'll shuffle the three C's, um, put them in a stack, shuffle the three B's and put them on top of the C's, and finally uh, you'll flip over your A. So let me get that done. Alright, so there's my deck of B and C lead, Viking leader cards. You'll take the A leader card as he's going to be the first leader invading um, in the first turn of the game. You'll flip him over and put him you know near the Viking players and then you'll get uh, 17 Norsemen and 8 Berserker units and place them on top of the card. Alright so I've got the 17 Norsemen and 8 Berserkers uh, on top of Haftan Half Den's Great Heathen Host Leader card. Then you find the leader token whose symbol matches. So that is uh, the red bird there. That's this one. So that's Half Den, and you just set that near the leader card. Next, you take the Alfred the Great Leader card, and you can just place that face down um, somewhere near the English players as he'll come in to play later. You'll take his leader token and place it on space five of the round track there. Next you'll place a Viking control markers on each space of the victory track here. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done off camera. All right, I've got a Viking control marker on each space of the victory track. And finally, just set the other Viking leaders uh, nearby so they can be easily grabbed by the Viking players uh, when their leaders come into play. And that's it. That's set up. Should have each faction should be set up and ready to go at this point. So let's get on with how to play. All right. So a game of 878 Vikings is played um, up to seven rounds. It, may not probably won't go all seven rounds but each round each faction gets to take a turn now at the beginning of the game the Norsemen start the game um, after that every time a faction is finished taking their turn you blindly draw a cube um, turn cube out of the bag here and whichever faction you draw they take the next turn um, and so forth until all four factions have taken a turn have taken a turn at the after the fourth faction has taken their turn that's the end of the round you do an end of game check to see if somebody's won which we'll talk about later if not then you move the turn marker to the next round and uh, put all the cubes back in the bag 
um, mix them up and draw the um, first cube to be the first faction to start the next round. So let's go, let's talk about uh, how a turn works. All right, a turn is broken up into several phases. You have the reinforcement phase, then you have the leader phase, then you have the movement phase, then you have the battle phase, and finally the draw phase. And so um, not every faction will um, have a leader phase. The English players will not have a leader phase until they get Alfred the Great um, at, at uh, round five, but the Vikings will have a leader phase every round. But again, the first phase is the reinforcement phase, so let's talk a little bit about how that works. So on a Viking player's turn, the first Viking player's turn, now at the beginning of the game, uh, this has kind of already been done. Um, the black player is the first Viking, so he, um, he, he gets the starting leader card, which you start with setup, but in subsequent rounds, the first Viking player, whose turn it is, will draw the next Viking leader card and put whatever units um, that that card states and whichever leader token is required for that and set it next to, to uh, that uh, leader card. And those will be the units that are available to invade that turn. Um, you probably still already have... Uh, a leader already on the board from a previous turn. Um, so again, that's the uh, reinforcement phase for the Vikings, but the first uh, Viking turn of the game during setup, you already flipped over their first leader card and put their units and leader token on the board. During one of the English faction's reinforcement phase, they will look at all these uh, reinforcement cities. These are the cities that have icon with pictured units in them. So this is a reinforcement city. A, a city that's not a reinforcement city just has an icon like this without this is a reinforcement city. Um, this is not. So again during one of the English factions reinforcement phase at the beginning of their turn they would look at all the reinforcement cities and place their units um, on that shire. So for instance, if it was the uh, Thane player's turn at the beginning of his turn on the reinforcement phase, he would place two of his units here, he would place one of his units here, one of his units here. Actually, we should have put <laughs> a unit there for start. I missed that. Um, one unit here. So anyway, He'll, he'll look at the map um, and put one of his units or, or however many units are shown in each reinforcement city. When it's the uh, house carl player's turn, you know, he would put one blue house carl here. He would put two blue house carls here. Um, so you only, on your turn, you only put your units that are pictured in the reinforcement cities. And again, going back to the Vikings, um, only the first Viking player that round gets to draw a uh, leader card. Um, the second Viking player to go that round does not um, get to draw a leader card. When you get to the fifth round, the first English player that goes will get to uh, take the Alfred the Great uh, leader and flip over his uh, leader card and put six or uh, four house carls and three um, Thane units on this card and then they would put the Alfred the Great on any reinforcement city or any English co controlled reinforcement city and then um, that leader will be available to them uh, going forward. And finally, the last thing a player does in the reinforcement phase um, during their turn is if there's any, if they have any fled units in this fled units uh, area, which we haven't talked about fled units yet, but uh, we will when we uh, get further on. But if they have fled units in here, the English player 
can put them on any, uh, the English faction can take their fled units out of that um, area and put them in, on any reinforcement city. Uh, on a Viking player's turn, they could take any of their factions, fled units uh, from that area and place them on any leader card they have in play or any Viking controlled coastal city so that any Viking controlled uh, coastal shire. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a city, it could just be any Viking controlled coastal shire. And Viking controlled means they would have to have units in there if ever Vikings uh, control a shire and they leave it and leave no units there then it automatically reverts back to the English. But we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. And finally the last thing a player does uh, on during his reinforcement phase is play one uh, movement card from their hand. So um, remember you normally have a hand of three cards and the movement cards uh, state how many armies you can move and how many spaces each of those armies can move. So if a player played this card he can move two armies or leaders um, up to four spaces. So, so again uh, if an example uh, since the uh, Norseman player is the first player of the turn at the start of the game or first player of the round at the start of the game um, he doesn't draw a leader card because one was draw, drawn during setup so he really wouldn't have anything to do during the reinforcements phase in the first turn of the game except for choose one of his uh, cards out of his hand to play so this one's a, a two four this one the all three that he happens to have right now are are two armies up to four spaces so it doesn't matter which one of these he plays but uh, we'll say he plays this one that's the last thing he does during his, his uh, reinforcement phase so next is the leader phase if you have a leader again the English won't have a leader until uh, round five um, but the uh, Vikings should almost always have a leader so during the leader phase, you, you will move uh, and battle with your leader and his army. His army are the units he has on the card. Now, um, again, if you played this card, you can move two armies um, up to four spaces. So the, the leader counts as one of those armies you can move. So when you're uh, during the leader which you can move during the leader phase so when you move now he he can invade uh, any North Sea coast so if you'll see this is broken up into uh, four seas on the map you have the North Sea which you can see here and it comes all the way down to here and this blue line separates it from the English Channel you also have the uh, Severn Sea over here and finally the Irish Sea over here so uh, Halfdan's great heathen host can invade any North, North Sea coast so that's pretty much any coastal area on this side of the board so again two armies four spaces so you would decide you know maybe what coast you want to come in on this looks like a little fortified so Maybe you come over here, so you're invading from the sea, so your first move would be there, so that's one. And then uh, maybe use your second move of four to move in here. And then when you're using a leader, if he moves in where there's enemy units, you immediately battle. Later we'll talk about moving armies that are not with a leader. And uh, in that case, you finished, finish all your moving all the armies you're going to move, and then you battle. But when you're in the leader phase and you move in a leader, you immediately battle uh, when you move into a space with enemy units. So that's probably also a good time to talk about battles. So when uh, 
a leader moves into a shire with enemy units, you immediately have a battle. The active player, which in this case is the Norseman, um, the active player is always the attacker and the uh, player, the side whose units are in there that he's attacking are the defender. The defender always gets to roll first. So you get to roll a number of dice, um, each faction that's defending, so in this case it's both the House Carl faction and the Thane faction. So you get to roll a number of dice equal to the number of units you have in there up to the maximum number of dice that you have. So the House Carl, they only have uh, two battle dice so even if they had three blue units in there or three house carl units they would only get to roll a maximum of two dice in this case they've only got one unit so they'll get to roll one die and the uh, thane uh, has one unit so he would get to roll one die now they have up to three dice so if he had three, if the Thanes had three units in there, they could roll three dice. If they had four units in there, they would still only roll three dice. So you roll the number of units you have up to the maximum number of dice you have. But in this case, it's uh, one house Carl, one Thane. So they'll each roll one die and see what they get. So let's talk about what the different possible results are. Well, for the uh, English player, these cross swords, that equals a hit. So the uh, Vikings would have to remove one unit from their army. For the Viking units, or um, Viking armies, the crossed axes are a hit. All right. Uh, this symbol um, on anybody's dice is a command, which uh, allows you to move one of your units out of the battle into any uh, adjacent region that has friendly units. So in this case from this roll the uh, house Carl got a command so he could there is an adjacent region so he could leave the battle and move uh, here because it's an adjacent region with friendly units. Another possible result is the flea result. If you roll that, uh, one of your units, you know, of that faction, so in this case the House Carl uh, faction, his one blue unit, if he rolled that, would have to flee. And when you do that, you go into the fled uh, area there. And and again, that's the the faction that rolled that. Uh, their their unit would have to flee. You couldn't uh, the house Carl couldn't roll a flea, and then instead you flee a Thane unit. So again, it has to be the faction who rolled that that flees. And what else do we have? There should be. I guess that's it. The uh, Ferd um, does have a blank side. And actually, <laughs> we I, I missed a step here, which uh, includes the third. So whenever uh, the Vikings are attacking a city that is defended by um, English units before the battle, the English uh, players get to draw a third card and then they place that number of um, third units into the uh, Shire so in this case five like so and that kind of represents the local militia and then the third have two dice so with five uh, third in there uh, they get to roll their maximum dice so I actually should have rolled these and uh, included that with my defense uh, role for the English side. So this would actually equal three hits and one command. Now you always apply 
hits and uh, flees before you apply commands. Now whenever you're applying hits, the Viking player, if it's their first hit that they've taken in a battle, they must at least take one hit to a berserker. So in this case they got to take three hits, so they have to at least take one one berserker so they could remove one berserker. Remember this is Halfden's uh, great heathen host that's represented. So this whole army is in this battle. So they would have to take one berserker and then they have to take two more hits. So in that case they could do it however they want. They could take you know, two Norsemen or one Norseman and two berserkers or two berserkers. But they would probably take two Norsemen um, and the reason why if we look at the table here of what's on the um, dice, the Berserkers actually have four hits on their dice and then two commands. The Norsemen have three hits on their dice, two commands and one flea. The House Carls have three hits, two commands and one flea. The Thane have two hits, two commands and two flea. And the Ferd have two hits and three flea and one blank. If you roll a blank, just nothing happens with that dice. So the Berserkers are really the um, most powerful uh, units since their dice have four hits on them. So anyway, we'll say, you know, he would take three hits um, and then one command. So he takes the two. So these would just go back in his supply, the, the uh, Berserker and the two Norsemen. And then uh, since the uh, House Carl... Um, got a command he could decide you know to move that guy out but then he's out of the battle going forward so you know maybe in this example he decides to stay I did want to reiterate that you only get the English players only get to draw a third card if they are defending a city if they're if they were defending in just a regular Shire spot they would not get to draw a third card or if the Vikings had previously um, taken over this city and they controlled it and the English were attacking the city um, the Vikings in the city they would not get to draw a third card it's only if they're defending a city but back to our battle example so all right the English player took their turn they made their defense roll now the Viking player gets to make its attack roll well it has quite a few Norseman there so it gets to roll all three of its Norseman dice and it still has quite a few uh, Berserkers so they get to roll their two again remember that you can only roll up to the maximum dice which is three for the Norseman and two for the Berserkers so then they roll and see what they got so they got not very good two hits a flea and two commands so they would have to um, apply their two hits so the English player gets to decide how they want to apply those they would probably apply it to their two third to two of the third and then um, the Vi the Viking player has to do one flea so they have and, and it's the Norseman that flew that fled so he would have to take one Norseman off of his card put it up here in the fled box remember he'll get that back in the reinforcement phase any units that are in the fled box there or fled circle there you um, that your faction will get those back in your in your next reinforcement phase and then two commands um, so you know he could uh, because the Viking uh, player doesn't have any uh, adjacent shires that have friendly units in it there's no he couldn't use those command results so because there's still uh, enemy units in there you then have another uh, round of battle so the um, English player would get to roll again two yellow one blue and one green and apply his results then uh, after that then the Viking player would get to roll his and you go back and forth until there's only one side has units left and we'll see more of how that works uh, 
when we get to the example turns. Um, if in a battle um, that the English got furred, uh, you know, militia, and they end up winning and all the Vikings are defeated there, any furred that remained in that shire at the end of the battle, they would go back. Um, they don't stay on the board. If the Vikings win a battle in a uh, city shire, so either one that's a reinforcement city or just a regular city, if they win a battle and they are the only one with units there, then they get to take the leftmost Viking control marker and put it on that uh, space and then they control um, that shire or that city, city shire. Now, if this leader, if you remember, um, he played a card where he could move two armies up to four spaces and he only moved one, two. Now, um, that would normally leave him two um, shires he could still move, but if you move into a shire in battle and you do not wipe it, um, this is for the Vikings now with their leader. If they move into a Shire um, with their leader and don't win their battle on their first uh, die roll, don't wipe out the enemy on their first die roll, then they actually lose one of their movement points. So in that example battle we did, he did not wipe out the enemy in his first battle roll. So instead of having two moves left, he would have only one move left. Now... Um, so then he could still move in here and then battle again here. And if he defeated that um, thing, again, they would get to draw a third card because they're in a city defending. But if he won that, then he would again take the leftmost control marker and put it there. But before he leaves this, before he um, moved out of here and moved here, he would most likely want to drop off some of his units from his card to keep control of that um, city shire that he just took over because if the Vikings ever leave a shire, city shire um, unattended, um, that control goes back to the English. So if he moved out of here without leaving a couple of units, then the English would immediately remove that control marker. So he would probably want to drop off a couple of his units before he moved on. Now, when the leaders move, they can pick up units as they move, drop off units as, as they move. But units that are dropped off um, cannot be moved again with your other, any remaining uh, army move movements you have left like this guy played this card to move two armies four spaces so he's moved his leader so that's one army that he's moved four spaces um, he still have one army left which this would constitute an army that he's left here but because he dropped them off he can't move them again this turn but if he had other armies on the board which he doesn't right now but if he did he would still be able to move one of those armies because he played a card to move two armies, four spaces, and the only army he's moved so far is his leader with this army. So that's the leader phase. The leaders will move and battle um, with, you know, but they do take up one of the movement from the card you played. If you have two leaders on the board, you know, you could use both your uh, army movement to, to move both your leaders around. Otherwise, you can just move an army, which we'll talk about now, which takes place um, in the next phase after the leader phase, which is the movement phase. So in the movement phase, you still move armies similar to leaders, like if the Thane player played this card to move two armies, three spaces. He, he could move any two armies on the board that contain at least one unit of his faction. So he couldn't move if uh, if the house Carl, you know, had two units here. He could not move that army because he has no unit um, in that army. That if it was the Thane's turn and he played this 
to move two armies three spaces. He could not move an army that doesn't have his units in it. But if if uh, he decided to move this army, you know, any number of units in a shire can make up an army. Now you can split them up, so if he had, say if there was the, these units in here, and the thing player was going to move an army, he could say, well, I'm going to just move these guys. Now he can take those house carl units as long as he has at least one of his units moving with that army. So remember he said, we said he played one where he could move two armies up to three spaces. So he could move, you know, one, two, three. Now when you're moving an army, um, you cannot pick up and drop off units like a leader can. So he couldn't move into here, pick up this unit and move it with him. You just can not move the army that you started moving. If you move into a space with enemy units with your army you must immediately stop now you don't battle then you finish your other moves so you know he played two armies three so maybe he moved that army there and then he moves this army one two in there also so now he'll be able to battle with all those units against that they would then kind of become a combined army these spaces on the map with these uh, little icons in them those are marshes and uh, nobody can move into those spaces unless you're playing a scenario that allows you to move into those but in the standard uh, game you cannot move into these marsh spaces all right so that's uh, the movement phase um so after you've moved all your armies you know, allowed with the card you played um, then you would have the battle phase and um, then you would just battle similarly to how we uh, showed with the leader you get to roll a number of dice um, depending on the number of units you have in there again the uh, active uh, player is the attacker and um, whoever's shire they moved into they're the defender, and the defender would roll first. You would go back and forth until one side uh, has no units left. And finally, after the uh, battle phase, you have the draw phase, where you would draw back up to three cards. So, for instance, this uh, the Norse player played this card. His hand is down to two, so he would draw back up to three cards, and he would uh, then his turn would end. And now we would draw the next player's turn cube out of the bag, and whichever player was drawn, their faction would then get to take their turn. Then after all four factions have taken their turn, then that ends the round, and then we would uh, check for the game end condition. So first game end condition, condition is if at the end of any round the Vikings have 14 or more control markers, controlling 14 or more cities, uh, city shires on the board, then they immediately win. If at the end of any round the Vikings have no control markers on the board, then the English immediately win. Each faction has one movement card that is also a treaty card, the Treaty of Wedmore. When a faction plays this card for a movement instead of putting it in their discard pile they place it beside the board if at the end of the round five or later so at the end of round five six or seven if both sides both factions of one side either both English factions or both uh, Viking factions have played their Treaty, Treaty of Wedmore card then at the end of that round, if the Vikings have nine or more control markers on the board, then they win. If they have fewer than nine control markers on the board, then the English win. And again, that can only take, after, <clears throat> take place after round five, six, or seven, and that's denoted here on the um, track.
All right, one thing we haven't talked about is event cards. You know, you can, each faction has certain event cards they can draw into their hand. And the color shown over here shows what turn that this card, which faction's turn this card can be played. So this card, because it's got the red over here, can only be played on the Berserker player's turn. And it says when it can be played during a battle. So he could play this event card um, during a battle on his turn. For this battle, the English may not draw a third card. So he could play that, of course, when he is attacking a city that is defended by English, and they would not get to draw a third card and put uh, third units in there. And uh, then that would go into his discard pile. So there's various um, event cards. For instance, this uh, event card of the Thane can be played on the Norseman or Berserker turn, and it's a spy. He can play it during a Viking battle, on, again on the Berserker or Norseman turn. One English army may move up to two Shires to join the battle. So, again, when a player plays one of these cards, uh, it just goes into their discard pile. So that's pretty much how you play. Um, it may have been a little confusing. I think we'll go through a couple of uh, sample turns and that will uh, probably get it to sink in a little better. I mean, it's pretty easy, um, really, but, uh, you know, maybe the way I explained it in the overview uh, didn't really get it to sink in. So uh, I think watching a few example rounds will, will really, really uh, get it in there for you. All right, I think I've got the board set back up. Uh, everybody with their starting hand, the cards that we started with at the beginning. So, um, again, at the start of the game, the Norse faction is always first. And so they'll play a card, just like in my overview. The only uh, cards he has is the 2 4, so he's going to play this one where he can move two armies up to four spaces. Um, so again, kind of just like in our uh, overview, um, he's gonna he's, we go to the leader phase. You know, there's nothing really to do in the reinforcement phase at the first turn of the game. So um, we'll kind of do similar to what we did. Remember, he can invade any north sea coast. So uh, we'll just say he's gonna come in right here. So that's he can move up to four spaces. So that's one space. All right, so now because he's moved there and there's enemy units there, we're going to have a battle. There's no city here, so uh, these units don't get to draw a third card, so they just get to roll uh, one dice each. So we'll get one blue and one green. We got one hit and the green fled. So remember, if that's the first, the first battle roll, of the English if they get a hit the Viking has to eliminate a berserker so that's what happened there so that's their one hit now the green uh, Thane flees to the fleet fled circle over there so that's their roll all right the Viking player gets to roll his three for the Norseman and two for the uh, berserker so they got one, two hits, and three commands. The commands aren't going to matter. Two hits is going to wipe out, you know, there's only one guy in there. Now, because this is not a city, a Viking control marker does not go there. Now, he could, if he wanted to, he could drop off some units there. Um, but in this case, he doesn't want to. Now, he's only used one of his moves out of four. And because he won that battle on his first roll, he doesn't lose one of his moves. So he still has three additional moves. So uh, we're going to say for his second move, he's going to move in here. And now there's going to be another battle. Now because this is a city, the uh, English get to draw a third card. So he'll draw this one. Oh, he only gets two. Um, but that's enough to roll two dice. So it's green. The... Thane, so he gets two green die and two yellow for the third. For the third, so he got one hit, one flee, one flee, and one command. All right, so one hit, 
because it's the first roll of a battle, um, he does have to take a Berserker casualty. But then one Ferd flees, because he rolled a flea, and one Thane flees. Again, that goes back up in here to his fled to the fled circle, and then the Thane rolled a command die, so he could go ahead and uh, move to one of these adjacent um, cities. And I think I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to do that. I probably should, but I'm not. Well, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna move here, and. Uh, so now the Viking player gets to roll. And again, he's going to still have all these dice. He got one, two, three hits. He did get a flea. So he, he's going to apply his one hit to this third. He's, he does have to flee one Norseman. And uh, then his other ones are commands that he doesn't have an adjacent space with the friendly units. Um, but now he controls this um, city, so we take the leftmost Viking control marker and place it there. Um, and because he won that battle on his first roll, he didn't lose a movement, so he's only used two of his movement. He still has two more, so he's gonna he's gonna drop off. We'll say he's gonna drop off two Norsemen and two Berserkers and go ahead and move on here and now he'll battle again now because it's a city the English get to draw another third card and they get three this time so we put the three third in there so they'll get to roll two of the third dice and then one thane dice so that's a hit Oh, and unfortunately two flee. So he does have to play a hit. And again, because it's the first die roll of this battle and they got a hit, then he has to apply it to a berserker. So he'll take that. And then uh, green has to flee. And when a third flees, they just go back into the their uh, supply. They don't flee to the box. I don't know if I mentioned that in my overview. All right, now it's the Vikings' turn. So he still has enough units to roll three Norse dice and two. So he got one, two, three, four hits and one flea. So the four hits is going to be enough to eliminate the two third. He does have to flee one Norse to the fled area. And then he took over this, so he gets to take another Viking control marker and place it on that city. And now he'll drop off a few units in there. And he still has one movement left. He's gone one, two. He won that on his first roll, so he doesn't lose a movement. So one, two, three. still has one movement left. So he could move to any one of these. No, he can only move. He can't move to this one. So he'll move. go ahead and move in here for his last movement. And we'll have another battle. Again, they get to draw a third card. They get four. All right, they get four. So that'll give them the two yellow dice, two blue dice, and one green dice. All right, so we'll roll those. We got a hit, a hit. A flea for the third and a command for the thane. All right, so the two hits got to apply first again because that was the first. They got hits on the first roll of the battle. He has to take one of them as a berserker, so he'll take one as a berserker and the other hit as a Norseman. Then a third has to flee again. That just goes back to the supply, and then the green could. Um, use that command to go to this adjacent but he's not he's going to stay there all right so the vikings roll in the battle they still have enough to roll three uh, black dice and just enough to roll two red berserker dice so they got one two three hits and two command so 
three hits, the English are going to take all three of those hits with their thirds. And then the Viking got two commands, so he could, um, because he does have a friendly adjacent city now, he could, um, he got two Norse commands, so he could take two of his Norse units off his card and have them go back there, but he's not going to do that. So it's the English turn again. They still have two House Carl and one Thane, so two blue and one green die. Oops, let me roll this one again. Alright, so that's two hits and one blue flea. Now, because this isn't the first hit of this battle, he does not have to take a berserker. Um, you know, this battle went on from the previous roll. So he doesn't have to take a berserker for one of those hits. So he's not going to. He's just going to take uh, two uh, Norseman hits. But, and then the blue does have to flee one unit up here to the fled area. And uh, now it's the Viking turn. And he still has enough units on his card for three Norse dice and two Berserker dice. And he got one hit, two hits, two flees, and a command. So both of these guys are eliminated because of the two hits. He does have to flee two Norse units up here. And then he got a command. He could have one of his units go to that adjacent spot, but he's not going to do that. Um, but he did uh, conquer this area now, so he gets to take another Viking command token and put it there. And uh, now he's out of move, so he can't move that army anymore. So that's only one army. Um, he still has one other army. He could move four spaces, but he doesn't have any other any other army on the board. And these ones, remember I said, if you dropped off units, um, you can't move those again as another army that turn. So that's pretty much going to end his uh, leader phase. Um, He can't move those armies for his uh, movement phase for his second army. So pretty much now uh, he's done. There's no more battle phase to be done. So now he's just going to draw back up uh, to the hand of three cards. So he draws an event card. And that's going to be the end of his turn. All right. So now we draw out of the bag to see who gets the next turn. Oh, we got the Berserkers. All right. So because they're not the first uh, Viking faction to go, they, they're not allowed to draw a Viking leader card. Um, and they, of course, don't have any units in the fled box, so there's nothing for them to do in the reinforcement phase. So then they uh, just go to the leader phase where they could move, uh, oh, they got to play a card <laughs> at the end of the reinforcement phase, so he pretty much also just has 2-4, so he'll play this 2-4. You have to play a card. All right, now, because it's his turn, he couldn't move this army because it doesn't have berserkers in it, and he's the berserker faction. He could move this army and attack with it, um, but... I don't know, at this position, <laughs> I don't really think he wants to do anything. So he, he played that card to move two armies, four spaces, but he's really not going to... Well, he could, he could still move this leader. It has berserkers on it, and he could move it, but he's, he would need to drop some units off here to maintain control of that. Um... All right, we'll say he's going to drop off these three and this guy. So he is going to move during the leader phase. Um, he's going to drop those off. That leaves him a few little guys here. And he's going to move one, two, three. No, he'll just stop right there. He's just going to move two and stop right there and end his uh, leader phase and movement phase. He's not going to move anybody else. And then he's just going to go to the draw phase and draw a card. 
All right, now we draw to see who's next. That's the house Carl. All right, so he gets his reinforcement phase. So first, he gets to put units everywhere there's a reinforcement city. So he gets to put one blue unit there. Now you can't do it where there's a Viking control marker, so he can't put reinforcements there. Um, he doesn't, he can't do it there. He does get to put one here. He does get to put one here. He does get to put one here. And that looks like that's it. He does get to get his reinforcement out of the fled box, and he can put that in any reinforcement city that's not Viking controlled, obviously. Um, so he's going to put that uh, here. And he has this uh, event card that he can play on his turn during the reinforcement turn, reinforcement phase. Remove one Viking unit, uh, move one Viking unit, Viking's choice from a Shire, then draw a third card and immediately initiate a battle against any remaining Vikings in that Shire. Okay, so I get to remove one Viking from a Shire and then draw a third card. Alright, so I'm going to remove a, a Viking from, uh, I guess, this Shire where the leader card is. I guess I can do that. So I'll remove um, this guy. Then I get to draw a third card and put three third there and then immediately start a battle. Because it's the House Carl's turn, the Vikings are the defenders, but they only have one uh, Norse and one Berserker die, so they just get to roll two dice. And they got one hit and a command. So they've got to take one hit. Oh, no, they got to, the, these guys got to take one hit. And then uh, the red got a command, but there's no adjacent space, so he can't go anywhere. So that doesn't really matter. All right, now the third get to roll their two dice. They got one hit and a flea. So he's got to apply one hit since it's the first roll of the battle. It's got to be to a uh, berserker. And then they got one flea. All right, now it's the... Uh, Vikings, he's only got one Norse, so he rolls. Oh, he got a hit. Well, pitiful. All right, so he eliminates my third there. But I took... Now, if a Viking leader ever loses the last man on his card, then that leader is just eliminated and taken off the board, and he's out of the game. But that did not happen here. All right, well, that all happened during the reinforcement phase because he played this card during his reinforce. So he still has to play a movement card. So he's going to play uh, this one so he can move three armies, one space. So he doesn't have any leader to go into a leader phase. So he just goes to his movement phase. So he's going to move this army here. Now remember, you don't immediately initiate a battle when you're just doing movement without a leader. You finish all your movement. He gets to move three armies, one space. So that was one army, one space. Um, he'll move... Uh, gosh, I don't know. He'll move this army, one space. And this army one space. So that's three armies one space. That's going to end his uh, movement. Now we do have a battle in the battle phase here. The house Carl's the attacker so the uh, Viking gets to roll first. He just has one dice and he got a flea. So unfortunately he flees and that leaves the Viking leader alone, so he is eliminated from the game. So this army doesn't even need to roll, and that's pretty much the only place I've got battles, so that's going to end his turn. So the final turn we know is going to be the Thane. So he draws his cube, puts it up there. 
his reinforcement phase so he gets to put in any city shires so he gets to put two in this reinforcement city shire he gets to put we can't put one there because that's biking control he gets to put one there he gets to put one there uh, he gets to put one there he gets to put one there and he gets to put one there then he gets to take his fled units out of the fled box and he can put those in any reinforcement city shire so that are English controlled so he's going to put one there and put one there and I guess he'll put one there oh and I forgot for the uh, for the house car player he should have drawn back up to three cards at the end of his turn okay back to this guy he's got to play his movement card he's going to play this one two armies three spaces and that's his Treaty of Wedmore card. Um, so we place that by the side of the board. But anyway, two armies, three spaces. So he's going to move uh, this army one space. He can move it because it's got green. He's going to move this army one space. And. I think that's it. Yeah, he can only move uh, two armies up to three spaces, so he moved two armies. So now we'll have uh, now we go to the battle phase. So we'll have a battle here. Again, the Vikings are defending, so they get two Berserker dice and two Norse dice. I'll roll. I got three hits and a that was a command. So three hits. That's not good. Um, they get to decide how they want to take them. So they'll do two. Uh, two Thane and one House Carl. And then the Norse got one command. He could move one guy over here if he wanted to, but he's going to stay. So now the English get uh, two blue and two green dice for their roll. They got two hits and two fleas. So he's got to play two hits because it was the first uh, hits on the first uh, English roll of the battle. One of them at least has to be a berserker. So he'll take one berserker and one uh, Norseman. And then unfortunately one Thane and one... Uh, house Carl have to flee. All right, back to the Viking. They get one dice each, and they got two hits, which is enough to eliminate. So they're not uh, they're victorious. So they don't lose control of that uh, Shire. Now, if they ever if if the Vikings ever do lose a Shire, um, then that control marker just goes back on the track. But uh, that's ends the battle so that's pretty much going to end the round while well, he's got a thane player draws back up to three cards so we would check game in conditions if the vikings had 14 or more uh, control markers on the board they would win um, since they don't they don't win and um, because they at least have some remember if they have none on there then the english automatically win but they do have three on there so then we put all of the turn, oops, put all the turn cubes now back in the bag, shake them up, and we would see who was first. Well, it's the uh, Norse player. Oh, we forgot to advance the round marker. Norse players first again. So I'll just quickly show what they would do now at the beginning because they're the first Viking faction of the round. They get to draw a uh, Viking card or Viking leader card now this one is the only one of these like this reinforcements they don't uh, get a new Viking leader this round 
but they would get to if they still had a Viking leader or controlled or any Viking controlled uh, settlements on any coast which they only have one on a coast so they would get to put um, again they don't have a leader card if they had a leader card they could put some of these or some of the, or all of these on the leader card um, and some on a Viking controlled coast um, well actually this one is also on a coast because of that little piece <laughs> hitting in there so he's got two two Viking controlled uh, coast shires so he can split these units so he gets nine so you know he might put uh, one two three four here the other five here and then he gets two berserkers so maybe he puts one here and one here so again this reinforcements card you can either you can put those units that it shows um, split them amongst any leaders you have on the board, which he doesn't have any, or Viking-controlled coastal shires. Now, I think that's the only card like that in the leader deck. You know, normally he would draw another leader, um, Bjorn, so he would get this guy, and then he would put 11, you know, Norsemen and four Berserkers on here, and then on the leader turn he would get to invade with this guy. Um, but anyway, you can see that's pretty much how the game plays. You move with your armies and battle, and uh, of course the English are trying to keep the Vikings from taking control of cities, and the Vikings are trying to take control of at least nine cities, so by the time they get to round five, if they control at least nine cities at the end of the round, and the Two, and see one Treaty of Wedmore is already played if a faction if one side has played both of their Treaty of Wedmore cards and we get to round five six or seven and the Vikings have at least nine then they win or of course as I said at the end of any round if the Vikings have at least 14 they win in the other case the the English win so that's how the game plays I think it's pretty fun of course if you've seen my uh, video on 1775 uh, Rebellion, this game system is pretty similar, although in that one there's no leaders. Um, but the armies, and the armies are cubes instead of little figures, but the movement is the same sort, of, you know, with these movement cards. And you can move a number of armies, a number of spaces. But So it's kind of a very, if you know that game, this one you can pick up very easily. Um, Anyway, I enjoy this game. You know, like I said, I've only played it twice, once with, uh, against a real opponent and once with myself. But I've played 1775 quite a few times. Um, and, uh, you know, it's fun, and this game's fun. Now, I will say I do have an expansion for this game. Well, actually, it, it's an expansion, but it comes with multiple uh, modular expansions you can add in you know some one more all of them um, I have not tried any of them yet but uh, maybe the next time I play this against somebody I might throw in one or two of the expansion modules and just see uh, how that goes but uh, anyway I think this video is long enough I uh, hope you got a good understanding of how the game plays thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it